what is generative AI and how does it impact automation testing? Can you use AI for test automation code reviews? And have you seen the latest version of Playwright? Find out in this episode of the DevSecOps News Show for the week of March 26. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. This episode is sponsored by the fantastic folks at Apply Tools. If you're looking to take your automation projects to new heights, Apply Tools and their visual validation testing are game changers. Try it out for yourself by creating a free account now by using the link in the first comment down below. First up, automation news. So I know there's a lot of buzz in our community about AI and chat GPT and all these technologies. And a lot of people ask me, hey, Joe, what's the future of testing with AI, with automation? So I found this great resource for you. It's a webinar from the folks at Magnify AI on generative AI, the future of testing. So in this webinar, they're going to have an expert panel that goes over and discusses the current state of artificial intelligence, as well as the practices, uses, and limitations of generative AI for testing, and why having an AI-first approach can improve your product quality. It also goes over some of the key things you're going to learn from this event about like the AI boom, the roles in software development cycle, and the impacts on the way we deliver value to exceed customer expectations. You're going to discover the capabilities of generative AI platforms and their impact on the testing field, delving into the role of growing technologies such as ChatGPT, and also is going to cover AI-powered visual testing platforms and why human capabilities are still needed in the quality assurance process. And they also have a great expert panel with Michael Feathers joining. He's the author of one of my favorite books, which is Working Effectively with Legacy Code. So I'm really interested to get his take on AI since he's been in the industry for a while and how it can actually impact testing or help testing or testing efforts that we do day-to-day -day in our day-to-day -day jobs. So if you have anything to do with testing and AI and you want to know a little bit more on how this is going to impact you in the future or how you can benefit from this type of technology, I highly recommend you register now and you can do so in the first link in the comment down below. So have you seen the latest version of Playwright? A lot of people are raving about it and here's why. So this post actually goes over what the new features are and the key one is introduction to UI mode. UI mode equals watch mode plus time travel debugging. And the video mostly goes over the new UI mode, which lets you explore, run, and debug tests. And it comes with a built-in watch mode as well. And this is one of those features you have to see for yourself to really get it. So I highly recommend you definitely watch this video to see all about the new UI mode. I think you're really going to enjoy it. I also heard from one of my favorite Appium contributors, Sai Krishna, about a new feature that I think you should know about for Appium 2.0. So Sai Krishna just announced that Appium 2.0 now has a decoupled architecture that allows you to basically install drivers and plugins of your choice for a fully customizable experience. But he knows that this can cause a little bit of overwhelm when dealing with the setup. So Trini and Sai got together and created a new module that actually simplifies the install process. Plus, it includes Appium Doctor, which checks that all the necessary software is installed. And the link points to the GitHub project where you can learn more how to install and get started with the Appium installer. So thank you, Sai and Shrini, for this awesome contribution to Appium. So SmartBear seems to be on a roll about acquiring other companies. And this next announcement is how SmartBear acquires OpenTelemetry pioneer Aspecto to give developers greater application visibility. So this article goes over how the acquisition provides developers a unique capability to rapidly identify and correct bugs in a distributed environment through the integration with market-leading error tracking and performance monitoring solutions, Bugsnag from SmartBear. And it talks about how Bugsnap provides developers visibility into their end users' experience of their app, whether it's unforeseen errors, crashes, or performance issues. With the addition of Expecto, they're developing these capabilities to provide a broader developer-focused hotel-compliant observability platform that so this means developers can both identify production issues and rapidly troubleshoot to resolve these issues. So this is a growing trend, open telemetry, having developers more involved in distributed environments and be able to debug them on the fly. So really cool initiative, great acquisition. Definitely check it out if this interests you and you can find it all in the first comment down below. Another new release of software that was announced this week was Serenity 3.0 has just been released. And this article goes over what Serenity 3.0 includes. And I definitely recommend you check out the screenplay pattern 
And they also have a new way of running tutorials using Gitpod, which means you can use Serenity JS in your browser with no local installation required. I said this before, when I was working full-time as an automation engineer, Serenity was my go-to automation framework. And so if you're using JS or JavaScript, I'd highly recommend you check out Serenity JS as well. Also, I noticed my friend Akshay tagged me on a post for a new release that he has that has to do with Playwright. And this is how he just created a Playwright with Java Cucumber template. And this is going to help you quickly create Playwright with Cucumber Java and JUnit for assertions with Spark Extent reporting for HTML and PDF. So thank you, Akshay, for another valuable contribution to the automation community. So can AI help you with code reviews? Well, you could try it for yourself because there's a new tool that does just this. And this post is from Chris, who is the founder of devtools.ai. I had him on my podcast maybe six months ago, and they just released a new product to automatically use GPT to do code reviews. So the solution leverages AI to speed up code reviews and help you build faster. It's powered by OpenAI and will automatically add review comments to every PR, helping catch issues so you don't have to when you're checking in code automatically. Seems like a cool concept. I haven't tried it myself. I highly recommend you do. And if you do, leave a comment and let me know what you think. Next up, performance and site reliability news. So this is from Marie Cruz, who announced how Grafana is now the only observability suite of tools that now includes performance testing as a native part of their product suite. And if anyone's been following me for a while, you all know I started off as a performance test engineer. So these type of articles really catch my attention. And this talks about Grafana Cloud K6, which is a unified performance testing observability platform. And the article goes into more detail on how Grafana Cloud K6 can help you with shift load and performance testing left to boost release confidence and velocity, how to run tests on demand and easily scale to keep up with business needs, and how to reduce mean time to resolution with full stack visibility. Really great innovation at K6 as always. And if you're into automation or performance testing, I highly recommend you check this out as well. So I found another LinkedIn post by Umesh on something that I think you're going to dig as well. And this is a post from Prani on OpenAI SRE and scaling explained easily. So this article goes into more detail on what is OpenAI, has some cool graphs, and how OpenAI can help you with things like Kubernetes clusters and other SRE activities. So definitely a must-read article, and you can find it in the first comment down below. Next up, security testing news. So I'm always on the lookout for new tools. So this came across my newsfeed on a tool called Back. Slash. And this was posted by Shahar, how backslash AppSec solution targets toxic code flows in threat model automation. And it's a new cloud native solution that aims to address time consuming manual methods for discovering and mapping application code security risk. And using a tool like backslash helps AppSec teams reduce false positive alerts and alert fatigue. And this article goes over some of the reasons how that is done. So it seems like a cool solution that if you're into security or AppSec, something you definitely should check out. The well, links of everything of value we covered in this news episode, head on over to links in the first comments down below. And while you're there, make sure to check out our sponsor, Apply Tools, free account offer, and discover how to take your automation testing to the next level, leveraging visual AI. So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild News Show. I'm Joe. My mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end full-stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, Test everything and keep the good. Cheers.